In this lesson, we're going to be adding some zooming functionality and some notifications on click to our markers. We're going to be adding the on mouse button event to the marker. So let's go back to our documentation and search for the marker class just so we can get a better understanding of how the method works. So the method we're going to be implementing is called the on mouse button function. And it is called when a mouse button is pressed over this marker. So let's copy and paste this signature into back into our smart device marker class. Paste it right here. Let's close the bracket. Call it a public on mouse button. Since it requires a Boolean value to be returned, let's return true if it's successful. And finally, import the B button event class. For starters, let's just notify the user that a click has occurred and show the corresponding smart device ID. We'll use iModel app's built-in functionality called notifications.outputMessage. And all this does is it outputs a message and or alert to the user, and it takes in one argument, the notify message details object. So let's call that object's constructor, notify message details. And the constructor takes two mandatory arguments, the output message priority class, which tells you how urgent the issue is or the message is, and the, a brief message, which can contain a string or an HTML element, which is a string to keep things simple. So let's pass in the first argument, the output message priority. Uh, we'll just call it an info and our string. So let's say element and then this dot smart device ID plus was clicked on. Close the semicolon, save that. I'll tab to our React sample. And if we click on it now, you'll see the exact message that we've displayed. The element ID was clicked on. You'll get two messages because the event detects the on down and on up for the mouse button. So let's catch that going to our B button event property here. You'll notice that there's a property that we can check for the is down property. So let's go back to our code and catch that event. So if the event isn't down or the button isn't down, just return true and not show the next output message. Let's save and recompile that and go back to our browser. And we should just see one notify message details on click now. So exactly what we're looking for. The next thing we'll add is the zoom to functionality. And this is also contained in our iModel app class under iModel app dot view manager dot selected view. This gives us back the screen viewport, which contains our zoom to functionality. We'll make a non null assertion telling the compiler that it can't be null at this point. So it's okay, just continue dot zoom to elements. And this function zooms the view to show the tightest box around a given set of elements. And all it takes is a single mandatory argument, the IDs that it will be zooming to. Just to be clear, we cannot confuse this ID with the smart device ID. This is the element ID for our viewport. This ID needs to be retrieved from the biz schema. So to make things a little more obvious in the distinction, we'll pass in this dot element ID. We don't have the element ID yet defined in our class. So to retrieve our ID, we need to go back to our EC SQL select statement back in smart device decorator.tsx and add this to our query. This is called the EC instance ID, comma. And again, the same pattern. Go down to our smart device marker constructor, add the argument value.id to get our exact element ID. Go back to the smart device marker class redefine our signature. So this will now take the 
uh, we'll call it the element ID, and this will also be a string, declare the variable it'll live in, element ID is a string, set it in our constructor, this dot element ID equals the element ID, and that should do it. Let's now save all our files, go back to our browser, and let's test out the zoom functionality as we wait for this to compile. And if we click on it, it should zoom right away. So let's go back, click on a different, let's click on this bed, same idea. So the view isn't too great right now, so let's add some options to our zoom just to make things look a little better. Highlighting our zoom to elements, it takes a second optional options that you can redefine some few attributes that happen when we zoom. So let's pass in an object for our zoom to options. And we'll only change two things that should make things a lot nicer. The animate frustrum change to be set to true. And this functionality, this attribute, all it does is it changes the animation uh, on click. Before we had it, it instantly zooms in. So now it'll have a nice transition and ease into the the smart device when we click on it. And also let's change the angle. So the standard view ID. And all this does is it, it zooms to a particular rotation when we click on uh, and, and zoom onto the smart device. So let's define this as a standard view ID of a right ISO. And let's give that a save and go back to our React sample. Let it recompile and we should get a much nicer zoom transition now on click. So let's click on this bed. Oh, there we go. There you go. It has a nice zoom and it has a nice angle that we can see our element to. So clicking on different elements, you'll notice a nice transition. And the effect is much, much better. Again, all the functionality that I've implemented here are all documented on our itunejs.org website. And you'll notice the zoom to function here, zoom to elements, has this all defined for us. So all I did was pass in some view change options that you see, the animate frust gem change, as well as the zoom to options where I define the view rotation by using the standard view ID. So this information is already provided and you can start implementing them yourselves.